In the autumn of 2012, Bellarine Peninsula landholder Dorothy Williams was approached by the Bellarine Catchment Network and asked if she would allow fauna monitoring to occur on her property. One of the projects was to record the variety of bats that inhabit her land. Along with some local residents who were keen to see what he had caught, local bat expert Trevor Prescott set harp nets to capture the bats overnight. There's only one bat that is found around here of the 10 or 12 different species. There's only one you can hear. And if you do hear that little pip, 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 pip call, that's the white-striped free-tailed bat. Well, a big part of this project is the education and awareness raising, and part of that is to identify what uh, fauna species we've got left on the Bellarine. And we engage Trevor Pescott from the Geelong Field Naturalist to come and do that because he's got uh, wonderful expertise, as anyone in the region will know. He's returned here this morning, which he said he would do, uh, to come and see if we've been successful. And I think there were nine, uh, and I think Trevor said about three different varieties. So. Amazing. Birds will go, come into the, the traps, and occasionally I'll get a bird that will fly in. Um, they land there, but they can fly out, they can get out. The bats don't, they, they, they have to have a, enough space to get their wings out. They, they will generally get into little huddles like that. They're, they're very communal to start with. Oh, look at that, isn't that a, a beautiful little creature? Mm. That, that's Gould's wattled bat. So far three bats and three different species, so the, the lesser long-eared bat, that's a medium sized of these micro bats and they get the name obviously from the size of their ears but you also there are several species and you can separate them by the shape of the what we call a nose leaf, the little structure on top of the nose and with the lesser long-eared bat it's Y-shaped. The usual um, place that they live in is the uh, hollow trees. Uh, so the, the tree tree hollows that are um, are sometimes only tiny little little crevices, but the bats will, will go into that. This is one of the reasons that, that hollow trees are so terribly important. Uh, all right, well we'll go and and, and uh, make some measurements on these and just make sure that we've, we've got what we what we think. Trevor measures, weighs and records the species types. He collates the data and sends all the information to the Atlas of Victoria, who keep the observations on record for future research. In years to come, researchers may access this information and replicate the experiment to determine if bat populations have increased, decreased or stayed the same in the area. Research like this is incredibly important to provide a measuring tool on how our local ecosystem is handling pressures such as population increase, pest species and pollution. In the case of this property, Dorothy Williams, where we are today, Dorothy has said to me on a number of occasions, oh yes, we've got bats, I know we've got bats, but she's never known what species they were. And today we actually found out that there was three species of microbats um, that we recorded on one night of, of um, trapping. So that's just a great result. She knows what those species are, and she knows a little bit about them as well, what they feed on, what their habitat requirements are, and that just makes that connection so much stronger between Dorothy and her property and the values that are here. I didn't realise there were so many different varieties and how unique they are so that has been a real privilege and wonderful experience and hope to learn more.